Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a strawberry and cream swirl, I don't know why, in Adobe Illustrator. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator and I've created a new document, 1000 pixels wide, and a thousand pixels high. And I'm going to start by going to where the line segment tool is, left clicking and holding, and going down to polar grid tool. And I'm going to left click anywhere on the artboard, and you'll see the polar grid tool options window is displayed. Now the size will go for 600 by 600, but this can be anything you like. Concentric dividers, we're gonna set this to zero. And radial dividers, we're going to set this to 20 or you can add more or less, it's entirely up to you, but these are the main options. And then let's click OK. And it creates something like this. So we've got this little starburst all in a circle. And at the moment we have a black stroke, but let's just drag over this and just swap that fill and the stroke. So we have no stroke now and a black fill. And we can go and pick a different color from the color picker. So we'll go and pick like a, a nice strawberry red and we can see all the dividers as well. Next, we're going to select the Live Paint Bucket option. It's usually located under the Shape Builder tool, so just left click and hold. And we'll just left click anywhere to make this a Live Paint group. And then what you can do is you can go and pick some colors and color this up. But what I'd recommend doing first is just deselect this and go over to the Swatch panel and create those colors now. So it doesn't matter what they are, but the important thing is that we create two global swatches. Now a global swatch essentially means that once we've created these swatches, if we change the swatch at any point at a later date, it will update every instance of that color swatch in our document. So for now we're just going to create a red and let's say a grey one. We can change the color later, but the fact that they are both created is the important thing. So if we just select this now, we can use the paint bucket tool to pick that red. And we can go and give these color. So I'm just left clicking on all of these. And then I can select the other color. So a very, very light gray, almost white. And I'm just going to fill in all of the other gaps. Now what I can do is I can double click on those swatches check the preview box and as I adjust this you'll see it adjusts everything in real time. So this is really 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 cool and a very handy time saver as well. So I'm going to fine tune this. We're going to go for that really nice strawberry color. Double click the other swatch, check the preview box and I can fine tune this as well. So a little bit less blue and we want to find a balance between the green and the blue channels. Sorry, a little bit less red, but find a balance between the green and the blue channels. That's the middle and the bottom one. But of course, these are global swatches, so you can update this at any point. So we'll click OK for now. So essentially, we've got the, the basic shape for our strawberry and cream swirl. And what I like to do throughout creating something like this is just create these manual checkpoints. So I'll grab this, hold Alt and Shift, and drag a copy over there, just for safekeeping in case anything goes wrong. So next what I'm going to do is grab the ellipse tool, left click anywhere on the artboard, and create an ellipse that is, again, 600 by 600. So this matches the dimensions of our original shape. So that's quite important. And we'll just move it over here for now. And we can drag over our strawberry and cream swirl and then go to object and expand. At the moment this is still a live paint group because we use the live paint bucket tool so there's a few things that we can't do to it but if we expand it and leave object fill stroke selected and click OK it's now no longer a live paint group and there's a few other things we can do to it. So we could select the live paint bucket again and start coloring it up but when you click it, you can see here it says, click to make a live paint group. So it's important that we make it not a live paint group before we start the next step. So we'll go to effect, down to distort and transform, and you can distort it in a number of different ways, depending on the strawberry and cream swirl you're going for. 
We're going to twist this one and just check the preview box. And you can see I've been having a lot of fun with this already. You can go totally bonkers or you can start from zero and just, just gradually increase the, the angle on your swirl. This is such a bizarre tutorial. <laughs> and click OK. And from the appearance panel on the right or at the top under the window menu, you can see we have twist listed and you can click this. You can go in, you can adjust the angle further if you want to. But what this is doing is it's actually twisting all of our shapes out of line. So we don't have that smooth circular edge around the outside anymore. But that's okay. We have our 600 by 600 circle over here. So we'll just hold Alt and drag a copy of this circle. And we'll just check all of this is grouped together. Yep, this is all moving around as one object. So now we're just going to position this circle over our other circle and make sure it's on top. If it isn't, just go to Object, Arrange and bring to front. Now with this on top, we're going to go to Edit and Cut. This removes it from the scene, but it copies it to the clipboard. All we need to do now is just hold Shift and Alt and scale up a tiny bit from the center. Next, we go to Edit, Paste in Place. So you can see we have this around the outside now. And with this circle on top, I'll just change the color so you can see. So we have the green circle on top now. It doesn't matter what color it is. We're going to drag over everything and go to Object, Clipping Mask and Make. And what this will do is it will crop our strawberry and cream swirl inside the green circle. So now we have that nice smooth edge. And of course we can double click on the clipping mask and it will, as you can see here, take us back inside. And we can go edit our twist and we can change all these different properties and we can still edit our global swatches. So we've still got a lot of flexibility, but if we just come back out of that group, we've used that green circle to make a clipping mask around the edge just so we have a nice smooth outline. And this is pretty cool. It's uh, very, very simple. We've got two colors. What we can also do if we want to, depending on the style you're going for, is bring in another circle. So we'll just again go to Object, Arrange and bring to Front, put this one on top. And because this is the same size, it will line up very easily with our clipping mask. Just zoom in really, really far. And with this one on top, we can select it and go to the Gradient panel. And if we click anywhere on the Gradient slider, it applies that default black to white gradient. We're going to change the type from linear to radial. And if yours is the other way around, if you have the darker color, the black on the middle, you can just reverse that gradient here. So we want the black on the outside and we're going to drag this diamond shape here to adjust the midpoint of our gradient. So we're going to go for about 80%. So we've got a lot more white than black and we can even bring white a bit over as well. You might be thinking, well, this, what is this? This doesn't have anything to do with our suite. Haha, <laughs> wrong. If you go to the transparency panel on the right and change the blending mode from normal to multiply, it blends this over the strawberry and cream swirl we've created. Now, of course, this is a little bit too intense, that shadowing, but we can bring this down ever so slightly. And you can see what it does is adding that shadow around the edge and leaving the center a little bit lighter is it just creates a bit more depth. So it actually makes it almost look a bit more 3D. So let's compare. So here's our original 2D example. And here's the one where we added the gradient shadow around the edge. And there we go, we're done. That was fun, wasn't it? And there we go. That's how to create a delicious strawberry and cream swirl in Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. A huge thank you to my patrons who support me on the channel. If you'd like to find out more information, there is a link in the description. But like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.